Hello, dear listener. Welcome to the first episode of 20 Minute Books, your new companion in the world of knowledge and insights. I'm here to guide you on a journey through the key takeaways from some of the most insightful books out there. Today, I'm thrilled to delve into the groundbreaking book, Zero to One, Notes on Startups or How to Build the Future, by Peter Thiel. In the next 20 minutes, let's uncover the secrets to building a successful startup. So sit back, relax, and let's embark on this knowledge-packed adventure together. Part 1. Get ready to unlock the keys to unrivaled startup success. Ever stop to ponder on what truly separates a thriving startup from the rest, making a mark in the business world? Certainly, numerous answers will cross your mind. However, allow me to let you in on the grand secret. Mastering the art of carving out a business monopoly is the highway to attaining groundbreaking success. Now, I know you'd be thinking, aren't monopolies notorious to competition and innovation? Surprisingly, monopolies can spark incredible innovation. Reaching monopoly status means you've delivered a trailblazing creation, a unique innovation that stands unchallenged and unmatched. It's the journey from the birth of an idea, zero, to its successful realization, one. And this, my friend, forms the backbone of Peter Thiel's business philosophy. You may recognize Thiel, not just a household name. He's a towering figure in the venture capitalist world, the genius behind the birth of PayPal and the first outside maverick to bet on Facebook. As we delve into the insights from his critical work, Zero to One, you'll get a taste of his profound knowledge, enriched with lessons from the very course Thiel taught at Stanford University himself, this book unravels the roadmap to transforming a mere concept into a market monopoly. We'll kick off our journey with the first three chapters, where you'll decipher the three don'ts that are critical to avoid. Then, fasten your seatbelts as we cruise across the next five chapters. Here, you'll stumble upon five golden rules for sailing your way into monopolistic success. Yet, before we plunge into these enlightening lessons, Let's initiate our journey on the path every ambitious founder needs to tread. A journey into the mesmerizing world of the future. Part 2. Get ready to step out of the ordinary and plant your flag on unexplored territories. Let's begin with a thought experiment. Project yourself to the year 2100. What images keep popping into your mind? The future, as you might picture it, is inevitably different from what we are familiar with today. After all, the idea of the future is inherently tied to the dynamics of progress. Each one of us has lived long enough to witness the transformations of time. The most striking of these changes being the leaps and bounds we've achieved technologically. So, when you envision the world in 2100, what do you see? Perhaps fleets of ultra-fast aircraft, sophisticated, whisper-quiet self-driving vehicles, or computer screens so thin that they almost seem invisible from side on. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? But don't get too carried away yet. What you've pictured is predominantly an upgrade of what already exists today. This concept is what we refer to as horizontal progress. It expresses the extension or enhancement of pre-existing ideas and innovations. In this paradigm, globalization plays a key role helping and advancing and spreading the pre-established concepts to a wider audience. But hold on, pause for a moment. If your sights are set on pioneering innovation, horizontal progress just wouldn't cut it. The trick here is to reach for vertical progress, the path to an entirely new technology or method. Consider the birth of smartphones, a classic example of vertical progress. We leapfrogged from a world bereft of smartphones to one where they've become almost ubiquitous. However, introducing these smart devices to untouched markets in developing nations was, in fact, horizontal progress. The businesses involved were merely furthering what was already in existence. This brings us back to Thiel's insightful paradigm of ascending from zero to one. Picture a simple graph. The x-axis symbolizes horizontal progress, the cycle of enhancement and replication, marching from one to two to three and so on. In mathematical parlance, it's the journey from one to n. On the other hand, 
The y-axis stands for vertical progress, the climb from non-existence to creation, the leap from zero to one. Part three, success is a symphony of focus and determination, not a fluke of luck. Embarking on the journey towards vertical progress is inherently daunting. It's like navigating through unknown waters. You are tasked with envisioning something that hasn't yet seen the light of day, but has the potential to fulfill the needs of tomorrow. As the captain of a startup ship, you ought to hone your ability to prophetically gaze into the future. This unique ability stems from a deep, critical understanding of the present. Thiel places such immense value on this ability that during job interviews, he confronts candidates with the question, what important truth do very few people agree with you on? The underlying premise here is that only individuals who can break away from the shackles of conventional thinking are equipped to foresee and shape the future. So, let's assume you've meticulously analyzed the scope the future holds for your venture. What's the next milestone? It's all about focus. People often fall into the habit of indefinite thinking, relentlessly trying to prepare for every imaginable twist and turn the future might spring upon them. However, this approach is akin to chasing shadows. The future harbors an overwhelming magnitude of unknowns and variables. A more pragmatic strategy is to focus your efforts on sculpturing the best possible future for yourself. A common example to illustrate this notion can be observed among students. Many dabble in a ton of extracurricular activities, hoping that this will earn them a ticket to a top-tier university, but wouldn't honing their skills in just one area and becoming a virtuoso in that field be a more logical path. Retaining this perspective is vitally important for startup founders. Startups possess one single shot at the perfect future. Carving their path towards it demands relentless focus and concerted efforts. The route to success is paved with deliberate choices, spotting the perfect niche, crafting an innovative product, and patiently awaiting the opportune moment when all the pieces of the puzzle fit together perfectly. And when that moment arrives, it's your time to break away from the pack. Part four, take the road less traveled. Don't just compete, dominate, and build monopolies. In the world of business, competition is often heralded as the driving force of innovation, propelling companies to constantly outdo each other. However, there's another perspective to this. Monopolies, not competition, are the real instigators of innovation. Most associate the term monopoly with enormous corporations unfairly sidestepping competition. But monopolies could also indicate that you're doing something spectacularly well, so well that competition barely stands a chance. What's the secret here? Creating something so transformative, so groundbreaking, that it becomes impossible for others to replicate. Let's consider Google. Largely unrivaled in the search engine sector, Google has become a monopoly unto itself, and let's not forget that it became such by consistently outperforming its competitors like Yahoo and Alta Vista. Unfair? Not quite. While other companies might view this as an unjust race, it's a minor issue limited to a select group. Meanwhile, Google's ascension to monopoly status has wide-reaching benefits. For everyone who relishes the power and convenience of Google's search engine, monopolies don't stifle long-term competition. They simply redefine it. If another company aspires to compete in the search engine market today, it has to bring a fundamentally new and superior offering to the table not a recycled version of Google. The gains, the end consumer. Once again, innovation thrives and the consumer reaps the benefits. Another win for monopolies? They rescue industries from spiraling into a cesspool of brutal competition where nobody wins. Take, for instance, the dog-eat-dog world of the airline industry. In 2012, airlines were so engrossed in outbidding each other for customers that they had to slash ticket prices resulting in a pitiful $0.37 cents profit per passenger trip. In comparison, Google rakes in over a quarter of its revenue as profits. Beyond societal benefits, monopolies prove advantageous for companies themselves. First off, monopolies enjoy a technological edge. Their cutting-edge proprietary technology is leaps and bounds ahead of competitors. Google's speedy and highly accurate search algorithms are virtually irreplaceable. 
setting the bar higher for budding competitors. Next, monopolies reap network effects. The value of their product rises with every new user joining the platform. Consider Facebook, which would hardly be of any use if your friends and family weren't on board. Monopolies, with their extensive user bases, set a steep curve for fresh entrants trying to lure customers away. Then, there's the advantage of economies of scale. The more units produced, the lower the cost per unit. Think about a bakery with fixed expenses such as rent and utilities. Whether the bakery makes one or 10,000 buns a month, these fixed costs remain unchanged. Producing more buns means these costs are distributed across a higher volume, lowering the effective cost per bun and allowing for competitive pricing. Lastly, monopolies often boast esteemed brands, something hard to replicate or rival. Apple, often celebrated as today's preeminent tech brand, has gained this reputation not just for its sleek, innovative products and stores, but also for the buzz it's managed to create around its brand. So, when assessing a business's potential to emerge as a monopoly, turn your attention to these four criteria, technological advantage, network effects, economies of scale, and branding strength. Part 5. Putting Theory into Action, Your Roadmap to Success That was a heady dose of theory, but don't get overwhelmed. It's time to get hands-on. As we journey into the next five segments, you'll be handed five golden nuggets, crucial advice on how to steer your startup to monopolistic success. What are the key elements needed? A visionary mind, an elusive secret, unyielding persistence, a robust corporate culture, and a winning sales strategy. So tighten your seat belts. We're ready for takeoff. Part 6. The Power of Vision. A Startup's Secret Ingredient. What comes to mind when you imagine a startup founder? Adventurous? Passionate? Sure, these traits are common. But there's another ingredient that sets apart the truly successful from the rest. It's a sprinkling of peculiarity, that secret seasoning. Reflect on the founding team of PayPal. Each member was, in their own right, strangely unique. Some had hobbies as peculiar as building bombs in their teenage years. Quite out of the ordinary. These original personalities provide much more than just the seed from which the company sprouts. They bring forth a vision. And a vision isn't something you can extract from a business manual, following step-by-step -step instructions. It's intrinsically linked to these unique personalities who breathe life into their distinctive ideas. Take the historic tale of Apple, for instance. Back in the whimsical 70s, Apple started as a small, playful, and inventively original company. But as the popularity of its products soared, the culture within Apple transformed. More and more managerial positions were added until, in 1985, Steve Jobs, the unusually creative brain behind the venture, was ousted. Apple was now proficiently managed but lacked a soul. Fast forward to 1997, Apple, teetering on the verge of bankruptcy, welcomed Jobs back into the fold. Fueled by his visionary concept of personal computing, Jobs took some daringly drastic decisions. In 2001, he introduced the world to iPod, a device that analysts casually dismissed as a stylish gimmick for Mac enthusiasts at the time. Yet the iPod was nothing short of a roaring success, paving the way for the iconic iPhone and iPad. By 2010, Apple was redefining the landscape of personal technology devices, marked by their sleek design and exclusive features, all part of Jobs' meticulously crafted master plan. This phenomenal journey proves that even the mightiest of companies need the resourcefulness and distinct vision of a founder to truly reach the pinnacle of success. Part 7. The Art of Unlocking Secrets. Innovation's Key. Let's face it, the quest for vertical progress can feel like a daunting journey, seeing as we inhabit a world brimming with revolutionary tech inventions. It's easy to feel that there's nothing new left to discover, but don't fall for this fallacy. Truth be told, our world is teeming with untapped secrets, significant elements that are hidden from public view or are too obscure to pique anyone's interest. Certainly, uncovering these secrets is challenging. It's an uphill battle against skepticism, 
made even more difficult by the isolation of pioneering into uncharted territories. But it's far from impossible. For tech startups, the ultimate secret is achieving technological superiority over rivals. That's the kind of secret that can cement your position as the market leader. Play the game of hide-and-seek with these secrets, lest you become a mere replicator, a purveyor of horizontal progress, pushing out run-of-the-mill products in already saturated markets. Let's walk down memory lane to the 1990s, a time when Hewlett-Packard was leading the tech innovation race with groundbreaking products like affordable color printers and awe-inspiring all-in-one machines that served as a printer, copier, and fax. It rode the wave of secrets, churning out one innovation after another, until a conflict within the boardroom put a halt to its inventive spree. Tom Perkins, an engineering maverick on HP's board, advocated for doubling down on tech innovation. Unfortunately, Chairwoman Patricia Dunn's approach prevailed. Dunn contended that technological matters were beyond the board's purview. The result? HP abandoned its treasure hunt for secrets in the 2000s, leading to revolutionary product development coming to a standstill and subsequently halving its market value. The takeaway? This tale drives home the significance of relentlessly pursuing secrets to ensuring a company's continued relevance and prosperity. Part 8. Tenacity Pays Off. The Value of Persistence. In the budding stages of PayPal's journey, back in 1998, there wasn't a penny in profit. Its founders, Max Levchin, Luke Nosek, and the renowned Peter Thiel, dedicated years towards an operation that largely thrived on expectation. In fact, most of the company's value in 2001 was pinned on projected earnings that weren't estimated to materialize for another decade. Yet, as history would later reveal... PayPal did manage to rake in serious profits down the road. So, what's the moral here? Simply that it can take a startup years to turn profitable. But that doesn't mean the venture lacks value. A company's value isn't confined to immediate profits, but extends to long-term earning potential throughout its lifetime. As a founder, reigning supreme from day one shouldn't be the expectation. Longevity and commitment are the keys to eventual success. There's also wisdom in starting small, claiming your stake in a narrowly defined niche before gradually expanding. Becoming the best in your chosen market, no matter its size, is your golden ticket to establishing dominance. Once you've monopolized this niche, you can dive confidently into broader waters. Consider the journey of Amazon. Jeff Bezos' initial dream was to transform Amazon into the world's leading online retailer, a dream he achieved, but not before taking baby steps. Bezos started by selling only books. After achieving dominance in the book market, Amazon ventured into other categories, CDs, videos, and eventually a plethora of other products. Amazon's success, contrary to popular belief, was not an overnight marvel, but the fruitful outcome of persistence and gradual expansion. Part 9. Culture is King the power of strong relations in startups. Embarking on the journey of starting a business is a formidable task, indeed. Yet amidst the chaos of these early days lies an essential aspect of your venture's success. The creation of a formidable culture, one that fosters mutual support and belief. Painting a living picture. At PayPal, the team's bond was so strong that many of its members later collaborated to bring their own ventures to life. In the startup ecosystem, every team member's contribution is pivotal. Thus, it's prudent to assess not just the skills and vision of team members, but also their interpersonal relationships before investing in a company. Thiel learned the importance of strong personal ties the hard way. Prior to co-founding PayPal with Luke Nosek, he had invested in a business Nosek started with a barely known associate. The venture faltered due to their contrasting personalities. This experience serves as a stern reminder of the importance of choosing your business partner wisely. Balancing the diverse interests of different stakeholders in a company becomes crucial at this point. 
Founders may be intent on patient product development while the board may be pushing for swift profits. While these interests aren't always at odds, they can trigger conflicts. Hence, it's crucial to establish a conflict resolution mechanism early on. Creating a strong culture doesn't stop at the boardroom door, though it encompasses every person within an organization. A culture of mutual understanding and trust amplifies productivity and effectiveness. It's vital to understand that culture isn't about flashy perks like a pool table or soda machines. At its heart, it's about nurturing robust relationships, a feat that demands time and sincere efforts. Part 10, Mastering Marketplace Magic, The Power of Stellar Sales Strategies. The allure of innovation can bewitch any tech enthusiast, and most founders are guilty of succumbing to its charm. Many would happily spend their days immersing themselves in the realm of product development, often neglecting a critical part of the business equation. Sales. Inventive products, no matter how groundbreaking, hold no value unless they find their way into customers' hands. So, how can you bolster your sales strategy? Firstly, you need effective distribution to sell your products. The importance of quality distribution extends beyond solid sales channels to also include the efforts and organization that go into each sale. Evaluating each potential client and determining the effort you're willing to expend on securing the sale can massively enhance your distribution. Consider author Peter Thiel's experience with data analytics firm Palantir. Here, a single sale can rake in millions of dollars, necessitating personal involvement from the CEO during the selling process. Yet, in a business where individual sales fetch only a few hundred thousand dollars, the CEO's involvement might not be the most efficient deployment of resources, making a competent sales team essential. Enhancing distribution also involves leveraging strategic techniques aimed at not just selling your product, but building strong relationships with your customers. Manipulative tactics seldom work. The key lies in understanding your customers and your product. While some products thrive via viral marketing, where users spread the word, increasing user base, others might require the assistance of traditional advertising. Yet, before assigning your entire budget to a certain marketing venture, it's advisable to start small. Experiment with various strategies among a small customer base. If an approach delivers results, you can confidently extend it to a larger audience. Remember, Every great sales strategy begins with understanding your product and your customer, and execution, of course, lies in the details. Part 11, Turning Visions into Reality, a startup checklist to keep in mind. Let's rewind to Silicon Valley between 2005 and 2009. The investment bubble was soaring, and the industry being hailed was clean technology, or clean tech. Pioneering sustainable and renewable energy usage sounds like a golden opportunity, right? A swarm of companies emerged, fueled by over $50 billion in investments. However, a majority failed, dragging their investors into the abyss along with them. The reason behind their demise? An overly optimistic approach to business and a lack of market analysis. Let's delve deeper into specific areas where they fell short. Cleantech companies failed to recognize that to compete against established energy companies, they needed technology that was 10 times better, not just marginally superior. Many postulated that Cleantech was on the verge of rapid exponential growth, specifically in solar panel technology. Unfortunately, advancement in clean technology has proven to be more linear and less swift. Companies were battling fiercely for even minor segments in the trillion-dollar energy industry, a smaller market with the potential for establishing a quick monopoly, would have been a smarter bet. Many clean tech companies lacked technical leadership, putting them at a disadvantage when it came to product innovation and development. Take the example of the electric vehicle startup, Better Place. Betting on their product's excellence, they neglected the need for robust distribution channels, despite a horrendous $800 million spend only to sell 1,000 cars. Better Place inevitably succumbed to bankruptcy, Numerous solar technology ventures were taken aback when Chinese companies began manufacturing analogous products at a significantly lower cost. This was an event that should have been anticipated from the get-go. 
To avoid such pitfalls, here's a foolproof checklist to gauge your startup's readiness. 1. The engineering query. Do you have a groundbreaking technological innovation? 2. The timing test. Is this the best time to start your venture? 3. The monopoly measurement. Can you dominate a sizable portion of a small market straight away? 4. The people puzzle. Is your team equipped and ready to seize the opportunity? 5. The distribution dilemma. How do you plan to get your product to the customers? 6. The longevity litmus. Can you maintain your market position in 10 or 20 years? 7. The secret survey. Have you identified a unique opportunity that has eluded others? Remember, the key to a successful startup isn't just about revolutionary ideas. It's also about meticulous groundwork, realistic projections, and strategic execution. Final Summary The Road to Entrepreneurial Success Your journey to entrepreneurial triumph stands on one underlying principle, striving for a monopoly. Begin by setting your vision on the zero-to-one objective translating to carving out an entirely new category rather than conforming to existing norms. Identify an extraordinary idea to launch your startup, remembering not to cast your net too wide too soon. Pinpoint a small niche where you can impeccably outshine the competition. Once you've established dominance there, you can set your sights on broader markets. Yet, be prepared to upset the status quo, Success is the reward for the audacious, not for those who merely copy. Chart your own course, make your own rules, and you'll build a business that claims its male monopoly. Dare to be different, and the world will take notice. Thank you for joining me on this insightful journey through the pages of Zero to One. If you've enjoyed our time together, whether you're commuting, taking a break, or just winding down, please take a moment to follow and rate the 20-Minute Books podcast. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will explore another groundbreaking book that promises to enrich your daily routines and expand your horizons. Until then, happy reading and happy listening.